Alright guys, so Welcome to the 2020 BrewTubers Online Brewers Club Yeast Experiment. Brought to you by our proud sponsors. Imperial Yeast, a half stainless steel mash panel sponsor of the BrewTubers Online Brewers Club and official yeast provider of the Yeast Experiment. Imperial Yeast offers brewers of all sizes access to world-class yeast and the best possible customer and technical support. Be sure to grab a pack or two now at your local homebrew shop or Woody's Homebrew. And lastly, Hopsteiner, the official hops provider of the 2020 Yeast Experiment. Get brewing. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the uh, second tasting video of four of them. I know I had said three in the other one, but I uh, apparently can't do math, so that's all good. Um, so today we're going to do three more of the BrewTubers yeast experiment. Pretty excited. Uh, so far, the first three really impressed the hell out of me. Um, you guys are, are awesome brewers. Uh, really excited to try uh, these beers tonight, so let's get at it. Okay, guys, so up next is Wall Effects version of this beer, which is pretty awesome. It says, uh, Feck this. <laughs> I'm drinking beer. Um, WLP 644. So, admittedly, my whole 10 to 12 years of uh, home brewing, I have yet to use a single yeast by White Labs. I don't know why, I've always stuck to either Imperial uh, Organic for as long as they, they have been around since they've been on the scene. Uh, Fermentus, a lot of US05, SO4, uh, 3470. Uh, all those uh, things are readily um, available. And then of course, uh, a whole bunch of smack packs, uh, one and ale three. Um, I admittedly just have not used White Labs that much. Um, and they are a yeast I do want to get into and check out and, uh, and see how they fare. Uh, I've been pretty happy with my beers and the way that they've been turning out. Uh, but again, they're another uh, a yeast maker out there that I have not used yet. I'm really excited to try this. Um, this is legit my first White Labs beer, um, or at least a beer fermented with a White Labs yeast. So pr pretty excited. Um, firm temp, 75 for three days, 85 for five days, cold crash, 45 for four days. Um, starting gravity at 1062, final of 1014. Um, what's the math of that? Alright guys, so. Alright guys, so up next is Wall Effects version of this beer which is pretty awesome. It says, uh, feck this, <laughs> I'm drinking beer. Um, WLP 644, so admittedly, my whole 10 to 12 years of uh, home brewing, I have yet to use a single yeast by White Labs. Um, I don't know why, I've always stuck to um, either Imperial uh, Organic for as long as they, they have been around since they've been on the scene. Uh, Fermentus, a lot of US05, SO4, uh, 3470. Um, all those uh, things are readily um, available, and then of course uh, a whole bunch of smack packs, uh, one and ale three. Um, I admittedly just have not used White Labs that much, um, and they are a yeast I do want to get into and check out and, uh, and see how they fare. Uh, I've been pretty happy with my beers and the way that they've been turning out, uh, but again, they're another uh, a yeast maker out there that I have not used yet. I'm really excited to try this. Um, this is legit my first White Labs beer. Um, or at least a beer fermented with a White Labs yeast. So, pr pretty excited. Um, firm temp, 75 for three days, 85 for five days, cold crash, 45 for four days. Um, starting gravity at 1062, final of 1014. Um, what's the math on that? Let's uh, crack into it, shall we? Holy cow. Mm. Check that out. That looks beautiful. This is probably the absolute clearest one that we've had so far. Holy cow. I would say confidently this is the clearest 
so far. The absolute brightest. Absolute brightest. Holy cow. This looks amazing. Again, this, this green bill is perfect. It's just a perfect, nice copper amber color. Absolutely wonderful. Let's check out the aroma. I'm picking up way more on uh, Simcoe on this. There's like a uh, ooh, there's like a fruitiness, a little bit of a spiciness coming through with this. I really want to say a very, very, very. I'm calling like a point half percent of cinnamon coming through. Something there is reminding me. Let's give it a taste. Holy shit, that's different. Oh my god. So you get a really nice mouthfeel and then your palate's washed over by vanilla. I'm picking up vanilla, coconut, some tropical fruit flavors a little bit. Holy cow, I gotta look up and see what WLP644 is. Holy cow. Wow, this is way, give me goosebumps. Jesus Christ, dude. This one's way different. That's all I'm picking up is like coconut, vanilla, the citra really shines through in this one. The Simcoe is there in the finish. Wow, this is like one of the most drastic ones so far. This is interesting. I bet you this would go amazing with a New England IPA. So I couldn't stand it any longer. So I couldn't stand it any longer. I had to look this, look it up. Like that's like what it is. Holy cow, dude! Tons of cinnamon. Okay, I wouldn't say tons, but there's some like spiciness there. Um, just looked up WLP six four four. I'm not even gonna try and butcher that. I'm 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 not even gonna try it. Brooks, bro, no, no, Troy, no. I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna spare you guys the butchering of that word. I, I don't even know how to begin to pronounce that. Uh, this Belgian strain, traditionally used for wild ale fermentations, produces a slightly tart beer with delicate mango and pineapple characteristics. Picking up a lot of citrus with it. I can see this being really interesting in like a New England IPA for sure. This wild yeast has grown in popularity for styles like American IPA, American Pale Ale, and Blonde Ales due to its tropical and stone fruit flavors and aromas. This Saccharomyces strain can be used like other house strains and can be easily cleaned with proper CIP procedures. Unbelievable. Holy cow. Like this is significantly different than, than the others for sure. Absolutely unbelievable. See, now that it warms up, you're getting way more tropical fruit um, aromas from it. And a little bit of like that, that Belgian, a little bit more of that Belgian characteristics. Maybe a little bit of bubble gum, just like a hint, not much, just like a little bit. This was definitely the most interesting so far. Really interesting to see how this one plays with with, uh, I'm actually surprised how like clear it dropped too. Holy cow, absolutely unreal. Wow, great job. Um, the nose on this is absolutely fantastic. I am very pleasantly surprised. Well done, great job, this looks fantastic. Awesome guys, really love this stream. Um, would I call this a West Coast IPA? Probably not. 
Um, but the aromas and the flavors of how this year, this yeast transformed this beer is absolutely mind blowing to me. It, uh, it showed me the wide range of what yeast can do to a single recipe. Um, if you wanted to push it in one direction or the other, you have the complete option to do so. You can keep the same, same, uh, same ingredients, same malt bill, same hops, and just change up your yeast and have completely different beers. This is absolutely phenomenal. Exit 12 Brewery. These guys are literally legit, like the next state over. Um, uh, if you guys don't know, I'm in Northeastern Connecticut. These guys are being over in Marshfield area, Mass. Um, I think. But we'll find out. I'll uh, make sure I research that. But um, you guys are, are literally in my neck of the woods, so hopefully we get to hang out soon. Um, so this one says, without further ado, Yeast Experiment 2020 West Coast IPA, OG at 1065, Mild Gravity at 1016, and they used Imperial's Joystick AET. So I'm very excited. Um, I've read a lot about this yeast. I haven't had a chance to really use it. Um, I guess you can really manipulate it depending on uh, what fermentation temps that you can use. So that sounds pretty exciting. Uh, pitched at 61 degrees. Uh, one day at 62, five days at 65, full crash for eight days. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's crack into it. Uh, came up to a 6.5% ABV. Mm, smells pretty good. Citrus really not coming through for me. Cheers. Let's dig in. Let's go for a taste. Wow. Wow. This one's probably the least bitter of all so far. It is just unbelievably smooth. Starts out as more of a malty sweetness, so I'm picking up more of that than anything else. Then finally through the finish, the hops cut through the malt. Nice dry in the background. Nice dry finish. Picking up that caramel, caramel fruitiness from it. Solid beer. I feel like this really brings the malts to the forefront of this one. And really uh, puts that forward, and then you get the. If, if you if you told me this was like an English IPA, I I would think that I would I would be inclined to believe you. Solid beer, otherwise solid beer. That 
That's a great yeast. It tastes awesome. This beer is great. It just does not remind me of a West Coast IPA. Again, nothing uh, to do with 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 Exit 12. Um, the beers that they, those guys have been putting out and watching their videos, they look absolutely amazing. I think it's great. Um, but I think for the yeast selection, I don't know if this would be the first one that I would pick. Solid beer. I dig it a lot. Carbonation is great. Flavor is awesome. Very clear. Um, the lacing is beautiful. Not bad at all. Great job, guys. Cheers. On to the next one. All right, so next up is one from Dennis Penn, Woodshed Brewing Co. Uh, the Yeasty Boys 2020 Yeast Experiment, brewed on 2 1 of 20, keg on 214, can on 223. Um, 1062 original gravity, final gravity was 1015 with a, for an EBV of 6.2%. Um, use the bootleg biology brew philosophy blend 64 degrees for seven days before crashing. This is pretty exciting. I've read a lot about this uh, blend as well. Um, huge fan of brew philosophy, of course. I listen to their podcasts all the time. Um, I love uh, what they're doing and uh, all the different experiments, especially when it goes against all of your normal brewing dogma that we've uh, uh, essentially all grown up with. Uh, when you when you start to brew, you learn all these different things, and when you learn up. Uh, um, that if uh, has a actual impact uh, to the final product, which I think is really interesting. So let's go ahead and uh, crack into this one. That's so awesome. Oh, 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 Let's see if I can catch it. Lots of carbonation on this one. Wow, very beautiful color. Looks great. Same color head. This one is a little bit darker, I'd say, than the others. Um, a lot more hazy. A lot more hazy, that's for sure. The others, beautiful color though. Still very beautiful, but yeah, even even when I hold it up to the to the light here, it's uh, not as easy to see through, which is interesting. Let's give, let's uh, check out the aroma. Wow. This one is uh, way vastly different than the others for sure. Huh. Vastly different. This is more... Uh, kind of reminds me of like a raw green flavor to it. I get more of that like grainy sweetness. Body's good. It tastes a little bit light as far as the body. What was the ABV? 6.2%. The hops are there. It's very, uh, it's a very soft bitterness. It's not. A little bit more bitter than the previous, but still a little bit softer. Does that even make sense? I'm getting, like, I'm getting like a little bit of plum out of it. I'm getting some other flavor too that I just can't put my thumb on. Overall, though, very good beer. Uh, for, for it's not bad whatsoever. Solid. It's just soft bitterness all the way through. Um, I'm picking up again more Centennial. Not really. If you told me there's Citra in here, I don't know if I would guess it. Um, I don't know if I'd really guess Simcoe either, even though I know they're both in here. 
I just don't know if I would actually pick up on those. Mm, solo gear though. Um, other uh, styles that this yeast to go to work on. Solid, I dig it. A little bit more malty for sure. But otherwise, really solid beer. I like it. Good job.